Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a senior systems engineer here at AGI, and today we're going to talk about the dialable fidelity of the SDK communication systems. Now, what does dialable fidelity mean? Well, it means that you don't have to have perfect information about your systems to model them in SDK. You can start off with just some very rough information and then build up the complexity of your systems as you learn more or as you gain more information. So we're going to start by talking about this in terms of your transmitting systems. So transmitters are any communication systems that are putting out energy and that are actively transmitting. So I'm going to open up the transmitter in our SDK properties browser. And you may notice that my first type, the default type that I have here is a simple transmitter. And it's just asking you for some very rough information, a frequency, an EIRP, and a data rate. And so if you have this information, you can input it. Any information that you don't have, you can use the defaults to get a rough understanding of your systems. What you may also notice is all of the different types of transmitters that you can build in SDK. So you have a simple transmitter, a medium transmitter, a complex transmitter, even a complex retransmitter, laser transmitters, multi-beams. So you can see how you can add in a lot of different information as you have more and more complex systems. What we're going to do is look at how the difference between a simple and a medium transmitter appear. So if I change my option to medium transmitter, now you can see that instead of just a frequency in an EIRP, I'm actually specifying the frequency, the power, and the gain of my system. I still have that same data rate. I still have my modulation and filter options, but again, adding in that next layer of information. And what's important to know about medium and simple transmitters is that they're going to use an omnidirectional antenna. That means the power is going out equally in all directions. When we move up to a complex transmitter, this is where you get to define the antenna pattern that your system is having. So we can see here on our model specs, we still have that frequency, our antenna design frequency, and the power and the data rate, but we also have a new tab here for your antenna. And so when I go to our antenna tab, I have the option of specifying the type of antenna that I have. Our default antenna model is Gaussian, but using this ellipse option, I can choose any number of different antenna gain patterns. I can use a Gaussian or cosine square aperture, or even an external antenna pattern that will be uh, something that you define externally, whether this be from a, an anechoic chamber, whether this be from the manufacturer's design antenna pattern, or from another tool that you might have. You can bring all of these different types of antenna gain patterns into the software. Again, you get to specify your design frequency, the diameter, your beam width, your efficiency, your back lobe gain. Also, you get to define your polarization and your orientation. So it's important to note on the orientation that this is a fixed orientation. So it will always be pointed in this direction. If you have a complex motion for your transmitting or receiving systems, you would want to attach them to a sensor to define that complex motion and have the transmitter be a child of that sensor. So the sensor would have all the motion and the transmitter would just automatically inherit that. So these are your different types of transmitting systems. Now we can look at the other end of the signal on the receiving end of your system. So if I open up my receiver, you can see that we again have that same default simple receiver and we get to just specify a G over T value, a gain over temperature value. We can specify some polarization if you want to use the rain model, your link margin, again, the demodulator and filter options are there as well. If we look at the different types of receivers, the receivers have the same level of fidelity that your transmitting systems do. So your simple is going to be the most basic, it's going to have require the least amount of information. As you move up to medium and complex, you are inputting more information and having it more accurately reflect the real world systems. So if I look here at what our medium transmitting system would look like, we can see now that we, instead of just a simple G over T value, we have the ability to put in our gain, our line loss, our LNA gain, 
Again, more information. Our system noise temperature now appears as well, so we can specify if we are using a constant system noise or computing the system noise basing off of any other of environmental effects that you might have. So we can add in earth, sun, atmospheric noise, and rain noise all through the RF environment properties. And again, those demodulator and filter options. As we move up to a complex receiver, now, it, this is also where you get that antenna page again. So you still have the same options that your medium receiver had, but now with the added benefit of specifying the antenna pattern for your receiving system. Our antenna has the same options that your transmit side has for all of the different types of antenna patterns that you might want to use in SDK, including that external option, which would be bringing in your own antenna pattern that is how your system is actually defined. So now that you, we have our transmission and our receiving sides defined, we can actually compute a link budget, looking at the link quality between our two systems. So I have an aircraft here flying around the mountains and I have a static ground location that wants to communicate with it. And so I'm going to compute our link quality between the two. In order to do this, I'm going to go to our access page. Anytime you want to calculate intervisibility between two objects, in SDK we call that access. And I'm going to choose a receiver on my ground system. And I'm going to create my link budget report. And the link budget report is going to show us all of the standard link variables and data providers available. So we're going to see our gain value, our carriage to noise ratio, our EBNO value, our bit error rate for every time step that these two objects have intervisibility. So for those of you who looking through reams of data charts is not the most appealing way to digest this information, we can also create a graph of this information. And I'm going to create a custom graph that I have that just shows my carry to noise ratio over time, as well as my EBNO values over time for these two. So here we can see because my aircraft is flying in a circular holding pattern above the area that we have a very repetitive motion for my carrier to noise ratio and my EBNO values. I have a very good signal at some times, and then I actually have very poor link quality in other times due to the local terrain that we have in this particular area. So that is how you create a transmitting system, a receiving system, and a link budget report to tell you the quality of those systems here in SDK.